Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Be Shop. It's going to be a pretty quick video today. I want to go in here and show you how to do setting up manual tool offsets on this Tormach 1100MX. A couple things, if you've watched some of my videos, you've probably seen me go through this just during the operation of the machine. But it's been a couple of months since I've really gone in here and checked this. I, I really don't know how often I should go check and make sure that it's uh, reading accurately and that my setup is good. So if you remember, I'm going to use a ball bearing to go in here and set up my offset to this tool. Haven't checked that in a little while. And I've got an operation I want to do today where depth is pretty important. So I'm just going to double check a couple of tools and make sure that they're good. And I also just put in a couple of new tools. So I've got to set the offset on those for the first time. So again, just be a good check of, I haven't sort of recalibrated and checked this of, uh, of my offset. I just keep using the back of my vise every time I break a tool and do that. So we'll go in, we'll check, we'll see how the accuracy is held over the last month or so. And then I'll go through and set up a couple of tools. So it should be fairly quick. For those of you subscribed to the channel, sure appreciate you watching these videos. If you're new to the channel, want to see more videos on machining, welding, just everything else we've got going on here in the Blades to Be shop, good time to hit that subscribe button. All right, I'm going to try to run this with two cameras today. You'll be able to see what's going on on the Tormox screen, as well as what is going on with the, the probe and the dial here for setting the tool offset. So let's turn these cameras around and let's take a look at this. All right, first step in the process, figure out where to put the dial here for the manual tool offsetter. And then once that's in place, just double check and make sure that it is calibrated at zero with the dowel pin that they give you. May not quite look like it on camera, but if I line up straight on that, that is set at zero, so that is good. And then I have this set up as my G55 work offset. I'll show you that when I get the camera over there on the Tormox screen and uh, we'll make sure that we have our Tormox set to be reading this G55 work offset for this setup. So that is in place, we've got that set to zero. Let me get both cameras going here and we'll be checking, seeing what's going on on this side and see what's going on with the Tormach. All right, so our next step in here, we're looking at tool offsets, but first we need to make sure I set my offset to be on that G55. And actually, let me show you that here really quick. So in your offsets, you have tool offsets, which has your whole list of your tool library which is what I've got in here. And then you have work offsets. You have a whole lot of different work offset options. So right now I have my G54 is current project. So that's where I'm typically machining. I have my G55 set as my tool setter on the top of the vise fixed jaw. And I also, at one point I had to use it on the, the front of the vise, not on the fixed jaw. So I had it set up for that as well. In order to change this from G54 to G55, I can't just click on it here in the work offset. I actually have to go to main and I need to go into the line and I need to type G55. So right now you can see that we're at G54 in position and I'm going to now change that to G55. So we've got our G55 set up and you can see that is now yellow so that's now the offset we're on. Let's go back to our tool offsets and right now we've got tool zero in here. I think once I try to get this on uh, two cameras going we're probably only going to show this portion of the screen. You'll be able to see the the measurements and what's going on and where I'm touching to zero out these tools. Right now we're going to have tool zero and we're just going to double check to see how my offsetter is calibrated. So we'll get the other camera set up and we'll get that going. So in order to check my zero offset on my number zero tool, I'm gonna to use this ball bearing and I'm gonna go and push this between the face of my spindle and zero out my tool offsetter. And then I'm gonna punch in, this should end up coming out reading about 1.0002. I measure this bearing at two tenths over one inch. So once we get this down there, it should be my, I should get a Z reading of 1.0002 if this is reading the same as where we left off last time. So any difference from that will kind of give us a difference of the accuracy. So let's go ahead and get this uh, pinched in between.
So there is my reading on the dial, and we're at 1.0003. So we are within a tenth, within a ten thousandths of an inch. So I would say that is a pretty good repeatability. I'll go ahead and, and correct for that one tenth right now while we're here. And we'll put that at 1.0002. So now we're reset on that one. Now I'm gonna plug in tool number 99, which is my probe. And now we're gonna go and hit the probe on there and make sure that my probe is accurately setting the height of my workpiece. Now to calibrate the probe, that's when you're using that actual ledge on the tool setter. That's why we use the dowel pin to make sure that we know exactly where that ledge is. That's where we're zeroed. So now I can use my probe on that solid surface to make sure that uh, I'm pushing in my probe and not pushing down on the, the dial. It should end up being set to zero. So when I get that my probe set to zero, I should have a absolute zero reading in here. Anything different from zero will give us sort of that accuracy that repeatability difference from last time I set this up. There we go, and we got zero on there, and we're within two tenths over here. But I'm gonna go ahead and we'll clear up that two tenths right now. But again, I would say two tenths is pretty good repeatability. So I'm just gonna go ahead and touch Z. That's gonna zero that back out. So now we've got a good recalibrated accurate reading there on my probe. And now that we have that recalibrated, I'm gonna go ahead and set the offsets for a couple of new tools, and then we're gonna check a couple of existing tools that we had in there to see how well they come out. Get that back to tool zero, and then I'm gonna have the tool changer get my next tool for me. So I just put a new drill bit in tool number 51. So yes, I wanna use my tool changer to get tool number 51. And now let's go set the offset for this one. So it's gonna be considerably different from what it was before because I changed out the tool. So don't expect repeatability on this one. We get that lined up on the center and then all our other tools following should be in the center so we shouldn't have to move that around anymore. So you can see that was off 31 thou from the last tool that I had in there. So we touch Z and that tool is now set. Get the tool changer to store that one. And now I need to grab tool number 41. That's another new tool I just put in. So we've got 41 in there and you can see, I don't know if again, may not pick it up on this one, but it, does, it has nothing set for the length since this is a brand new tool, has never been used before. But now our tool setter is lined up on the middle, so we'll just go straight down and we're gonna be able to check the height on this one. There we go, we now have the tool height set for this one. We'll store that tool, and then we'll grab a couple others that were already set and we'll check how their repeatability is. All right, I'm gonna grab tool number 22. Okay, just gave it a quick wipe on the bottom, make sure there's nothing sticking on there. So now for this one, it should zero out at about the same time. Anything different from zero when the uh, tool setter is set at zero is gonna be sort of that difference in our repeatability.
Well, that one is spot on. There is no difference in that one. So that is good. I kind of blew past it a couple times there, as you saw in the video. So I needed to slow my Z feed down a little bit, but that one came in spot on. Let's check one more. So let's grab tool number 24. And tool number 24 is coming in within one-tenth there, so let me go ahead and take care of that one-tenth. But there it is. I would say we're getting pretty good repeatability out of this in using this manual tool setter, and it doesn't take a whole lot of time. I just set up two new tools, recalibrated the tool setter, checked a couple of other tools in there, and all just within you know five, 10 minutes here of knocking that out. That's sort of the process. Well, YouTube, that's a wrap for another video here in the blades to be shop. Hopefully that was helpful to go through and see how to use that manual tool offsetter to set up tools in this 1100MX. And also just good to see what that repeatability factor is after you've been using the machine for a while and you're still going in there and setting up for broken tools or whatever the case may be and just get an idea of, hey, what's the accuracy going to be? Do I need to check it every time? So right now that gives me pretty good confidence that if I'm only recalibrating my tool offsetter every month or so, I should still be in pretty good shape. Again, appreciate you watching these videos. Haven't had a chance yet, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and you'll know exactly when the next video comes out. Until then, I hope you're out in your own shop working on some projects of your own. I'll be here in the blades to be shop working on some other projects and putting that next video together. Till I get that next video out, take care.